Uh, ADHD Media, I'm gonna ask a second question from them because it's another good question. How does an artist start making props? Are there any platforms or groups I could get involved with? Yes. Um, the internet is so amazing in this regard for finding a community of people. So if you are a neophyte at making props for a living and you would like to make props for a living, um, my advice would be um, start making things that you're interested in making and start telling people about it. So join a forum like the Replica Props Forum where you can post builds that you're working on and you can talk to other members about them. Um, you are your own hype person and you're the only one who cares. So it's incumbent on you if you want to do something to do it and tell people that you're doing it and show them what you're doing. Like you've got, that's just completely vital. Even if you're an introvert, I'm sorry, but that's part of the gig is that uh, you've got to sing your own praises and show people what you can make. Um, Theater is the great gateway drug into professional making, in my opinion, because the threshold to entry is low, lower. Um, the budgets are non-existent. Like even in like a regular rep house, your budgets are gonna be absolutely tiny, which means the restrictions are gonna be many and that will make you a better model maker, seriously. Um, I, that, I, Look, I also, I advocate this path all the time because it's the one that I took and there are, there are others, but I, I managed to fall into theater, build a reputation for being able to solve problems mechanically and aesthetically that uh, were hard to solve. And that led to me through word of mouth, getting the attention of, uh, of someone in commercial special effects. Uh, and that was a great gateway. Uh, later on, actually, there's another question here about Da, 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 da. Wait, what should be in? Oh, right, right, right. It was about portfolio. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, come on, where is it? Ah, here we go. Adam G. This is germane to uh, how do you start making props? Adam G says, how would a costume designer for a movie or a play plan out a costume portfolio? My wife is in college and her homework assignment is to create a costume portfolio. We're unsure how this might work. Great, I love this question. So you are making a portfolio to show someone else what you can do. It's important to think about what those two relationships are and what they could be. You're meeting with someone who could hire you to do something for them. Ergo, what you show them has to show them that you are useful to them. I know that sounds ludicrously obvious, but I mean this in a more specific way, which is to say, if I'm a supervisor hiring somebody and they show me a portfolio that's all the amazing costumes they've made for this costume party their friends have every year, super elaborate, big things that they invented, that's lovely. But it's not a jumping off point for me as a supervisor to know how useful you will be to me. Because I don't know what you started with. I don't know what your original drawings were like. I don't know how closely you hewed to the aesthetic. I don't know how long it took you. I don't know how many compromises you made along the design process, which must have happened. Whereas if you show me a costume that I know exactly what it should look like, like Batman or a Regency uh, a ballroom dress or, or a, a Hussar's military uniform, if you show me a mix of both your aesthetic and your technical skill, and the way you demonstrate technical skill is by showing me something that I already know what it ought to look like. The, I learned this from a CG guy at ILM who's like, don't show me that CG drawing of the big steampunk room you designed, show me a Cadillac. If you can build a Cadillac, I can use you. And this is the truth about most of what you'll be doing when you're doing work for hire, you're executing boring objects to you uh, for hire, but it's vital that you be able to do that and that the, the person looking at your portfolio can see that you could execute that. So a mix of both. If you're going to show five different excursions of your, of your aesthetic, reduce that to one. You don't need five. I really like, if I'm looking through that, I wanna say, okay, cool, I see what you can do there. Um, Close-up techniques also, like really specific things you're really proud of, like a sleeve shoulder that was hard to get. Show me a close-up. Absolutely, that matters. 
um, and start making props. Again, if you are, if you want word of mouth about you to get out to people who could hire you, it's vital that that word of mouth gets to them that you can solve the problem they might have or that they don't even have yet, but they know that you could solve it. I hope that helps. Peckenstein says, what is your take on movie remakes? Are there any movies you feel shouldn't be remade ever? I feel like a lot of movies shouldn't be remade ever. Like great movies. Great movies should not be remade. Why would you remake a great movie? Why? It already exists. I was talking to someone the other night about Out of Sight, one of, I, one of my all-time favorite Steven Soderbergh films. Um, it's old now. It's um, mid, late 90s. It's George Clooney, Jennifer Lopez, um, Albert Brooks. Oh, my God. Don Cheadle is so scary. Out of Sight is amazing. And if you haven't seen it, you're welcome. It is a stunner. And you can watch it tonight. It's phenomenal. The idea of someone making a sequel of that, not that anyone has said that they're making a sequel of it, but this is just what Hollywood does. They'll take some franchise that's beloved and they'll just remake it, thinking that the word of mouth about the old one is going to gin up audiences for the new one. And that's crazy. That's totally crazy. A film is a classic for a reason and setting up to do it again doesn't make a lot of sense to me as the audience. Like, okay, uh, 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 Alternate case in point is like Gus Van Zant doing Psycho with Vince Vaughn and Anne Heche as a shot by shot remake. I get why that's interesting. And I'm really glad that Gus Van Zant got to do that. I'll wager that he got maybe more out of that than anybody else did. And I'm here for that. Like I love that, you know, he got someone to pay him to en enjoy a kind of incredible film school for him of remaking that movie shot by shot. But I don't know that that's something I want to sit through. Um, I do think that there are great things you can do with classic franchises. Dr. Sleep is a fabulous excursion that's not a sequel, it's not a prequel, but it's an in-universe jumping off point. Um, frankly, my favorite remakes, Planet of the Freaking Apes, man. Like, this is exactly what to remake. The original Planet of the Apes are cheesy, they're magnificent, they're wonderful. The makeup that John Chambers did was groundbreaking all the work on those films, but also they are super cheesy. They are a product of their time. And what Matt Reeves did uh, in updating the Planet of the Apes, I mean, they just kept getting, they just keep getting better. War for Planet of the Apes is amazing. I've watched that three or four times. Oh my God, I love Bad Ape so, so much. Those are my thoughts. Oh, another film that was great to remake, Flubber. Um, Terrific. Not a film like anyone was like, mm, one of my all time favorites from my childhood. Make it, remake it with Robin Williams is a genius move. And I say that not only because I actually did all the painting on the Weebos in, in Flubber, but that I think that's a, a great choice for the kind of movie to remake. Okay, we're getting some questions. I've got some itchies here, and I think it's that I ground some fiberglass and it was sitting on my table, and now I've got some like fiberglass causing me to have itchies. It's really unpleasant. After this, I'll break out some baby powder and from Silver Defender, who says, is there a film where you prefer the sequel, but can still appreciate the original film, even though you're not much of a fan of it? Films in which the sequel is better. Well, I mean, look, Empire, Empire Strikes Back is without a doubt my favorite Star Wars movie, full stop. Star Wars is my second. Um, I think Rogue One might be my third. Uh, and it's, and the, the difference between Star Wars and Empire to me is, is fundamental. It's not like one is better than the other. They are, it's apples and oranges. What I love about Star Wars is how hungry it is. You can feel, you can feel, you can feel its hunger. You can feel something new happening in that film. Each time I watch it, I feel like I'm still seeing something brand new come out. Um, but Empire, man, it's like the best of the old Hollywood studio system way of making something and the newest possible way of making movies. Irvin Kirshner directed it. Um, but it's not like I think less of the original because of that. I'm trying to think of other sequels in which that I think of as being slightly better than the original. 
Um, I think it's, I also think it's funny that Prey is without a doubt the best Predator film. And I love the original Predator, but Prey is way better. It's way, way better emotionally, way better. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, again, I love, love, love the original. I love how cheesy it is. I love the the labor that our Greenberg Associates did on those effects. And I lately have been, that predator effect, right? That invisibility effect that's lenticular, where it's like the predator is nothing but a set of repeating, slightly canted outlines of himself, of the background. Um, since my kids have moved out of the house, when I see them now, I have learned that a parent of adult kids, we see our kids as every age they've ever been, like Predator Vision, nested each one inside of the other. It's really true. So it is weird to say I see my kids in Predator Vision, and yet that would be the truth. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects, questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.